All right, so now you guys have all heard of global warming, and let's uh, briefly look at what it is. Okay. Yes, my friend? In some depth, yes. Okay. Okay. What do you mean? I, um, I'm kind of a critic, but um, oh, you're... I'm interested to see what you display. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> okay, so here's a point of view. How's that? <laughs> All right, so to run the world for a year, you, you need this much energy. Yeah. 600 times 10 to the 18 joules. See, here's the energy, 600 times exajoules. Okay, so yes, exajoules is 10 to the 18 joules. Okay, so that's how much energy you need to run the world for a year. All right. I'm sorry? It's the basic thing that kilo mega giga. Better. Yeah. 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 So there's 9, 12, 15, 18. Okay. Every three powers. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the name is. Okay, so 600 times, okay. Let's put that in perspective. So that's how much energy you need to run the world, okay? And that's one year, okay? So that's the power, how much energy you need per second to run the world. And we'll divide that by that, a gigawatt. What is that? That's a Hoover Dam. So that tells you how many Hoover Dams you need 24-7 to run the world. Now that's a number you can remember. Yep. All right, so 24-7, you run 15 to 20,000 Hoover dams to run the world. Yep. All right, well, today we are getting about 80% of that energy from fossil fuels. What are fossil fuels? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Coal, oil, and natural gas. Okay. So 80% of your energy is coming from there. Okay. How do you get this energy? Burn. And you burn it. You get heat. And then you take this heat and convert it into electricity or whatever. Okay. Electricity or motion in your car. Okay, this conversion to electricity is about 35% efficient. And the other 65% of the heat, you just throw it out the window. This is real money. So for instance, in the US, we spend a trillion dollars on energy. $700 billion is heat thrown out the window. You like my diagram? <laughs> okay, so this is real money. <laughs> yeah. All right, anyway, so 20% is renewable, 80% fossil fuels, you get energy to do work. Okay, when you burn this fossil fuel, okay, so one of the byproducts is carbon dioxide. So here is a if you like chemical reactions, so here's natural gas. This is burning means combining it with oxygen, okay? And carbon dioxide and water vapor are the products, plus energy. Okay, that's what you're after. Okay, by the way, uh, this is an aside. You guys know this equation? So this is the energy equivalence of mass, okay? So anytime you got energy, what that means is, okay, so these are the ingredients, these are the products. This weighs less than these guys. And that missing mass is what got converted to energy. Okay, anytime you get energy, 
that means this these guys weigh less. Okay? Did you guys understand that? All right, so that's how you're getting energy, okay? Anyway, I don't want to muddy the water, okay? So every time you burn fossil fuels, you're dumping carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And this guy is causing global warming, okay? Is there any proof of this? All right, so... I'm sorry? Right, right, right. So, so here is, so here is CO2, atmospheric CO2 levels. So if you were back here on Earth about 200 years ago, the concentration of CO2 was about 280 ppm, parts per million. What does that mean? What does this mean? Very good. One for every million atmospheric molecules, you have 300 molecules for carbon dioxide. That's what that means. Okay. Today, it's 420 ppm. Okay. So for thousands of years, it was constant, and it shot up in the last 50 years. Okay. All right. We'll, so we'll see. Okay. Okay. So you burn fossil fuels. So this was carbon trapped hundreds of millions of years ago. And we are releasing all that carbon, carbon in the atmosphere within a blink of an eye in 50 years. Okay? And that's causing global warming. And we'll see how it, it's causing warming, okay? So according to one opinion, this is... <laughs> This is the biggest problem facing mankind. One of the biggest problems facing mankind. Okay. All right, so hydrocarbons are hydrocarbons are compounds that contain hydrogen and carbon. Okay. The higher the hydrogen to carbon ratio, higher the energy content. Okay. So natural gas has uh, one of the largest energy contents. Okay. Okay, so the problem is uh, we burn fossil fuels and convert the heat generated to electricity or mechanical energy. You will learn in physics too, unfortunately, only about a third of the heat is converted to electricity or mechanical energy. Okay, so this process is only 35% efficient. Electrical or mechanical energy. And the remaining 65% is heat. Okay, remains as heat. All right, now here's the deal. Okay. So we have an atmosphere. We are getting energy from the sun in the form of visible light. Okay. Uh, we absorb this visible light and we radiate it back, except that we radiate it back as infrared radiation. Okay. The type of radiation you emit depends on your temperature. Okay, the sun is 5,800 degree Kelvin. We are about 300 degree Kelvin. And so we emit this radiation as infrared radiation. Now here's the deal. If you don't want to warm up, how much of our energy is coming? That's how much you have to radiate. Back in 1880, back in 1800s, there was a perfect balance. What was, whatever was coming in, we were emitting up. For the last 50 years, we've been emitting less. Less has been escaping, the, escaping to space. That's because we've been changing the nature of our atmosphere. How have we been changing the nature of our atmosphere? Yeah. So we are dumping more CO2, and CO2 happens to absorb this radiation. Okay, we'll give you numbers behind that. So if you radiate less, what happens? The Earth warms up. Okay. So again, these are rough numbers. So in 1800s, 
the temperature of the Earth, average temperature of the Earth was 14 degrees Celsius. And we'll tell how to measure the average temperature. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Today, 20, 20 roughly, let's say, or 23. 15.2 or 15.3 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Our goal is to be below 16 degrees Celsius. Why this? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Yes, yeah, so the claim is if the temperature gets to 16 degrees Celsius, all of Greenland will melt. And if all of Greenland melts, the sea levels would rise by 6 to 10 meters. 6 to 10 meters, uh, you will, uh, so 6 to 10 meters is twice the height of this room. You will displace 10% of the world's population, which is about 800 million people. What's that? What where we're living. Uh, I'm sorry? Just commenting on where we are living right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so all of this will be underwater. So if you want waterfront property, buy land in Atlanta. Wouldn't there be probably a little bit more displacement? Because that's just Greenland. I mean, more stuff would probably melt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is, anyway. All right, so you, we understand this that if the amount of energy that's going out is not equal to the amount coming in, you'll warm up the earth. Okay, again, this just shows you this is the rate, so this is the wavelength, shorter wavelength, this, this is what's coming in and this is what we are emitting, okay? All right, what happens is infrared, right, greenhouse gases absorb infrared light and they emit in every direction, okay? And so essentially the radiation gets trapped. Okay. So today the temperature is about 15.3 degrees Celsius. The goal is to be below 16 degrees Celsius. All right, so if we didn't have any CO2 in the atmosphere and water vapor, this would be the radiation if you measured it from space. This is what we would emit. And CO2 and water vapor, absorbing all this. Okay. okay, so radiative forcing is, okay. so here's the earth, how much energy is coming and how much energy is going out. This minus that is radiative forcing. Okay. So energy in, energy out, so radiative forcing is energy in minus energy out. Okay. Or actually, so radiative forcing is power in minus power out. Okay. Energy per second coming in minus energy per second going out. All right, so because of human-generated greenhouse gases, there's an imbalance of 3.22 watts per meter square. Here's a meter square. For every meter square of the surface of the Earth, 3.22 watts is being radiated less. All right, that number means nothing to anyone. What does that mean? Energy is being trapped on the Earth at the rate of 1,600 times 10 to the 12 watts. Every second on the Earth, you are trapping that many joules per second of heat per second. Here's a more... Uh, here's a more... Here's an easier number to remember. This is equivalent to exploding 20 atom bombs every second, all the time, and trapping the heat.
that's what's happening. Okay. So today the CO2 levels are for 420 parts per million. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you can read all of that. So again, uh, so this is 14 degrees Celsius. If these are various models, if the CO2 levels rise by that much, get to that much, we are already at this level point. The temperature can rise by as much as 3 degrees Celsius. That is, it would be 17 degrees Celsius. Okay. Greenland will certainly be goodbye. Okay, so if temperatures rise by 2 degrees Celsius, sea levels would rise by 60, 6 meters. 10% okay. of the world's population would be displaced. Uh, people live along coastlines less than 10 meters above sea level. Yeah. All right, is there any hope for you guys? Okay. We messed up. It's your generation's problem to fix. Okay. We'll be long dead. Okay. This is 16 terawatts. This is 16,000 Hoover dams. That's what's needed to run the world. This is how much sunlight is falling. You can run the world just on sunlight. Over what area? Okay, over this area, these black dots. I'm glad you asked. So this is very feasible. How much energy is retained from like solar panels and how much is lost? Is any of it lost? Uh, solar panels are about 20% efficient. But you don't care. It's free and you're not dumping CO2 in the atmosphere. There's always going to be some losses. I'm sorry? There's always going to be some losses to the heat. Yeah, you will. I mean, sunlight is falling whether you harness it or not. And that's nothing is going to change. So all we're saying is, instead of, uh, well, anyway, okay. So you can run the world essentially on sunlight. So why aren't we doing this? For starters, mm -hmm. why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? Uh, the sun is not going to rise tomorrow? There you go. Yeah, that's what I was no, well, you cheap batteries. Very good, my friend. That's what. Okay, the sun doesn't sh at your location. It only si shines 12 hours a day. So for the other 12 hours, batteries are too expensive right now, okay? You want to become a trillionaire? Invent a cheap battery, okay? Anyway, so there is hope. You can run the world entirely on solar energy, okay? You can run it entirely on wind, okay? All right, so let me sh tell you what these numbers are. So this is the remaining coal deposits, okay? So this is 900 terawatt hours. If you divide this, that's 15 divided by, 900 divided by 15 is 60. So if you run the world entirely on coal, no, yeah, 60, you, you can run it for 60 years. That's what that means, okay? So that's what those numbers mean. Those are fixed supplies. But, you know, we can run the world on, on just solar and wind. Okay, so that's the good news. So it's just a matter of time before this thing happens. So, oh. solar and wind by themselves can provide enough energy to run the world, okay? So if you, if you have six 
300 by 300 kilometer arrays of solar panels, you could run the wall. So you cover these guys with solar panels, the black dots, and you can run the wall. All right, so here is a model. Uh, I want you guys to, to go home and study this graph. This is, this is a model generated by a uh, Stanford University group. What this is saying is in 2010, th this is 1,000 Hoover dams, terawatt, okay. 12,000 Hoover dams with this energy mix, with fossil fuels and renewables were essentially zero, so essentially fossil fuels. You needed to run the world. If you keep the same mix, by 2050, you would need 20,000, 21,000 Hoover dams with the same mix of fossil fuels. Yeah. That's because, remember, fossil fuels are very efficient. You're throwing out 60% of the heat and so on. Yeah. But by 2050, you can run the world on wind and uh, solar. 40% would be coming from wind and essentially 60% with from solar. You don't have to invent any new technology, the existing technology. Yeah. And you can run the world only on 12,000 12, Hoover dams because you're not wasting any energy. So like I said, it'll be your problem to solve. I won't have to worry about it. <laughs>